Hey, love. Hey, what's going on? How are you, baby? I'm living. How about yourself? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. We're just waiting on you. How's the day going? Everything all right? Everything is good. It's it's a beautiful day in uh in Los Angeles. The weather is nice. I'm feeling my outfit's fly today. You know, it's a good one. I, I'm just trying to. I'm, I'm a hat person, so I'm trying to see what you're working with over there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh. El Salvador, okay. Well, you you are talking to Miami right now. It's beautiful down here as well. Um, you know, hopefully everybody out there on the West Coast is staying safe. You know, we're sending you lots of prayers and positivity. I know it's Thank you. a crazy thing. Level nine of Jumanji, AKA yeah. September, hashtag 2020, you feel me? But my man, let's talk about everything you have going on. First of all, um, to our amazing Hits 97.3 listeners watching right now, uh, 24 Karat Golden, a.k.a. Golden Landis Von Jones, sir. I love name? I love when you say my name. Your voice saying my name, that's beautiful. Oh, my God. <laughs> your name, um, you had no choice but to be famous. Like, your parents set you up for this. You know that, right? It, it was like a prophecy. Like, they're like, we're going to name this baby Golden. He's going to get rich and famous, and we're going to retire early. It's good. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Um, but I, I, I absolutely love, love the name, 24 Karat Golden. I've got to tell you, um, I do two stations. So I do my, I have a morning show in Miami, the SoFlo Morning Show with my amazing co-host, uh, Kelvin Live, and, and it's LP. And, um, or I should say Al Pizzle. And then I do nights in Tampa. And my night show in Tampa was the first time I heard um, Moo. And I remember as soon as like the beat dropped, I was like, I don't want to say that we just run through music, you know what I'm saying? But I was like, oh, <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me actually stop and listen to this one. Like for real, for real. Yo, just kudos to you. It's a whole vibe and I absolutely love it. Phenomenal job uh, on behalf of you and Ian you Dior. Too you too no, I mean, it's just- make my cheekbones hurt. Look how much I'm <laughs> But I, I was reading um, an interview that you did recently with the Recording Academy. Um, we'll talk about it in a second. Thank you. Just so long as you know when somebody says the interview you did with the Recording Academy, like the, <laughs> the Grammys, yeah. um, that you were literally just sitting around playing like Call of Duty. And out of nowhere, you just kind of came up with the hook. I mean, yeah, it's it's just crazy to me still like how how like effortless it was. like. I wasn't even trying to make music that day. Like I was just like, all right, I'm gonna go to my boy's house and kick it. But the song comes, the the, the I comes. hear that beat. I hear that uh -huh. beat. The song just comes. Like it, it comes from somewhere else. So that was what I had to. That, that was the question that was apparently on the world's mind. Why are you always in a mood? And I go <laughs> find out now. Well, it's the, right, and it's just so funny because it's such a like when we talk about music, right? Music is a mood. Songs, tracks yeah. are they're a vibe they just like the minute a beat drops the minute you hear a lyric it automatically takes you somewhere and you know you definitely managed to do that with that track but I gotta tell you as I was getting ready for this interview I was kind of going through like not Spotify Google you know one of the thousand streaming services that we have and I was just kind of listening to you to your tracks my man I gotta tell you so I just found like my three faves back to back obviously mood is is at the top of the list water run dry yeah. With Chelsea, unbelievable. And then I heard unbelievable right after that. And I was like, <laughs> and those are all, I'm like, this is, these are all not on the EP that you dropped. This is all uh, EP. Yeah, this is singles and features. You know, Chelsea got a beautiful voice and Cash Page, that's my sister right there. So I'm definitely glad you like those songs. No, they're so, so dope. But um, one of the things that I love, and I, I love the fact that I get to talk about it so much, especially with the up and coming artists now, is this space that you guys all exist in that is genreless. Like yeah. you're pulling from absolutely everything. You're pulling from pop, you're pulling from hip hop, you're pulling from rock, alternative. I, I know I saw you mention, shoot, I'll do something with my, like on some Miles Davis stuff if, if, if it comes down to <laughs> popping. I love that. I mean, I think it's, you know, my generation is, is we grew up with the internet so a lot of times before it's like if you want to listen to music it's like well what you're going to listen to you're going to listen to rap you're going to listen to hip-hop you're going to be a rocker like 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 you had to pick sides yeah. but now with the internet it's like you could just be you like i can make a playlist of 
uh, Chief Keith and Bruno Mars yep. and listen to that all day. And there's no radio station in the world or, or playlist that's going to be curated like that already. But mm -hmm. that's the beauty of it. You can do whatever you want. So what growing up, having that freedom now that we're at the age where we're expressing ourselves and, and putting our voices out into the world, we're just continuing what, what we already know, what we, the only thing we know. So speaking of what you know, I love that you mentioned that, you know, when you were working on the track with the label, obviously they have an idea of what they think should be a first single. And you as the artist have your own kind of, I'm sure, love affair with every song. Um, they wanted you to go with, what was it, Dropped Out of College, right? Yeah. Like, so and we, you were, did, we did go with Dropped Out of College. We did the video yeah. with, the, with the mom at the school and everything. And I, trust me, I ain't mad at that. That's probably one of my favorite videos I ever done. But it was just like, I was like, I need y'all to believe in this City of Angels song as much as y'all believe in Dropped Out of College. And that wasn't the case, but I wasn't one to, to be discouraged by that. I was like, shit, it's time to roll up the sleeves. Let me, get, <laughs> let me get into my digital marketing bag real quick and show them how it's done. And that's how we blew up City of Angels. And, and after that, it was like, you got to listen to me now because I've just proved y'all I know what I'm talking about. But I, I, I love that you were like, you know what, cool. Y'all are the funny folks. I'm going to let you do what you want to do. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go, I'm going to slide in my back pocket of social media followers and my fans who I have a different relationship with. And I, 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 I want to segue into that because I think that, you know, I, not that corporate folks are disconnected because they're not. And they're, we have some great teams out there working, especially with the young artists and everybody is being forced to kind of get up to speed with you guys. Yeah. But there's a relationship that artists have now than ever before with their fans because of social media, right? Like the conversations, it's not meeting them in a meet and greet line and giving them a hug and zapping them up and maybe signing something. Y'all have straight up downtime and real conversations and they have no problem telling you how they feel and what they want. Yeah, like I, I really be having real convos with my fans. Like, cause a lot of times bro, it's like, I know that, that that I got a, a, a younger fan base, they're more impressionable, they're growing up, and they don't got nobody to talk to. Like, they don't, mm -hmm. they feel like they really don't have anyone that they can ask a question about life or love or shit, stuff like that. So it's like, like, they, they're like, to me, to them, I'm like this, this, this figure that's so far away, attached from everything, they feel yep. comfortable telling me anything. So I'm like, shit, bro, it takes me 30 seconds to read your message and reply. Like, I don't mm -hmm. mind doing that for my fans. And because of that, they 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 show me love like no other. I mean, I was a fan choice for for Double XL freshman. I know. They did that, not me, not nobody at Double XL. Yep. I was gonna say I saw that in the comment when you post that you made freshman class for 2020 at Double XL, uh, that you you know, you you took the time to thank your fans. And that's so incredible. And and it really is it's so special to see. And I think as a person who's worked in radio, as long as I have what I really love about it, is there's an authenticity coming back to mainstream music that you probably used to only find, I don't want to say in the world of alt or like punk, where they were like so quick to put their, you know, wear their emotions on their sleeve and, and they were they were writing very real songs. Hip hop has obviously always been a soundtrack to people's lives. Yeah. Um, but I feel like we're seeing it in that mainstream space because your fans expect it. They know who you are. They see you and you're best and your worst at times because maybe you tweeting something or you're posting in your story. You know what I mean? So they can call bullshit on you when you drop a song and they're like, no, that's not who you are. Yeah. Right? You know, and Because and, I feel like it's like before in the past, like there wasn't as much transparency. So you could be, you could pretend to be something you're not, or you could yeah. rock super mysterious, you know, and, and that's just how it worked because of the, the environment we're in. But now the fans want more access than ever. They want to see you all the time. They want to see what you're doing every second of the day, right there, right now, you know? So if you're not authentic, eventually you're gonna you're gonna you people are gonna find that out people are gonna see that because you're being out there so much that you're gonna slip up but for me it's just like i love myself i'm cool with who <laughs> I, I am like i'm i'm happy of my successes and i'm i'm grateful for my mistakes and all the lessons i learned from them you know like like and i think having that attitude and that approach to it that that the realness shines through that's from the bay that's Aww. where i get that from I love that. That just gave me chills. And bro, let me tell you something. It's so much easier to be you. It's exhausting trying to pretend to be somebody else or something that you are not. And like you said, you can only pretend for so long before that facade cracks. Mm -hmm. And then 
Well, who were you? And now you've got to rebuild that trust all over again. But speaking of who you really are, I'm not going to lie. When I saw that you went to USC or you were accepted and you started on that journey, like that's no small feat. I went to the University of Miami and I, I, yeah. I always see USC and UM on very similar playing fields. You know what I'm saying? But then when I looked a little further and it was like, you were going to be a hedge fund manager? Like what? I, I mean, look, it was it was just like I'm a, I'm a real I'm not a business man. I'm a business man. So it's like hey. that, that entrepreneurial mindset has always been within me. And growing up, the the most successful person I ever met that that was a family friend of mine. That's what he he did. He was a hedge fund manager. You know, mm -hmm. he started off in finance. So I was like, well, I want to you know give a, a better life for my family and my future generations than I was. So. How do I be successful? Let me just follow the blueprint of the most successful person I saw. But as I got older and as I started getting into it more, like, I think I would have been good at it and I would have been fine at it. But I don't think I would have been as happy as I am now, you know. And now I get this experience where I'm still going to make a lot of money, but I get to do something I love every single day. When you write a random track while playing Call of Duty and it hits number six on the Billboard Hot 100, you doing some, you walking in your purpose, boo. You're walking in your purpose. But I do want to ask, well, so here's two things. One, you know we're not allowed to read a 24 karat Golden Goes Broke headline. You know that, right? No, you're not. You're not. You're not. You never. You know what I'm saying? So we can't see that. Do you have any financial advice for your young fans out there? Like things to do with their money starting now. Look, things to do with your money right starting now is stop spending it on dumb stuff. Like, look, I know you got to treat yourself. You know, it's, it's cool to treat yourself every once in a while. Me, I, I had a shopping problem in high school. But the only reason why I was able to have this shopping problem was because I was getting money. So if you want to treat yourself, you got to go hustle. You got to go out there. You got to earn it. And uh, put a little money to the side because you never know. What Someone told me, if you save your money, your money will save you. Bam, I like that. And you never know when a global pandemic might hit, right? Nice. Now, I know you're busy. You got a lot to do, but I do want to end with this. Now, I know you're your own man. You are carving your own lane in this music game. But if you had to choose a blueprint to follow, right, or to kind of, as guidelines, what artist's career do you think you'd most like to emulate? Ah, uh, ah, uh, I got to say... I, I got to take Drake's hit-making ability. I want to take Kanye's artistry and his passion and Jay-Z's business-making decisions and, 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 you know, intellectuality with ASAP Rocky's swag and fashion. And you put those all together, that's a 24K blueprint right there. Uh, you know what? You're a smart – because nobody's got it all, so you can be the first one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Shit. I love it. Well, we are here in Miami rooting for you. Is there anything we should be looking out for? Obviously, I told you my three favorite tracks, and they're not even on an album yet. So, I mean, are we doing any virtual tours? Are we in the studio? Are we dropping anything? What's I up? Mean, look, this is all I can say. I got a lot of great music coming soon. I've been working relentlessly on my debut album, El Dorado, and I can't wait to share it with y'all. I love it. Everybody watching, make sure you pick up that Double XL Freshman Class of 2020 issue. Obviously, our boy 24 Karat Golden has made the cut. Baby, we are so proud of you. When you're in Miami, when we can all finally hang out together, please slide through the new hits 97.3. We're going to 11 and we're getting some chicken tenders. Hey! I'm flying to the station. We're having us a ball. All right. Get off my Zoom on that note. Just get off. I can't. He's dropped 11 on me. I'm done with you. Mwah. Please. Thank you for everything.